Now let's discuss step number two, which is size the BV modules. Number one, different size of B modules will produce different amount of power. So according to the manufacturer of the PV module, we can determine using the specification, we can determine the amount of power produced by each PV module type. Step number two, find out the sizing of the PV module. We need to find our sizing of our PV module. We will need the total peak watt produced needs. So in order to get the total peak watt, we will use an equation in order to find it. But first, we have to know that the peak watt or WB or watt peak produced depends on the size of the PV module and the climate of the site location. There is an important factor which is called the panel generation factor which is different in each site location. So according to, to your own site location, we can find the panel generation factor. We will, for our example, we will take for Thailand, the panel generation factor is 3.43. To determine the sizing of the PV modules, calculate as follows. Number one, Calculate the total watt peak rating needed for PV modules. So from our previous step, we find that total watt hour needed per day. So now we are going to size the PV modules. In order to size the PV modules, we need to get the total watt peak. So in order to get the total watt peak, we will divide the total watt hours per day, which is found from step number one by 3.43 which is the panel generation factor to get the total watt peak rating needed for the PV panels needed to operate the appliances. Step number two, calculate the number of PV panels for the system. Divide the answer we obtained in step number one, 2.1 by the rated output watt peak of the PV modules available to you. Increase any fractional part of the result to the highest full number or the highest integer. That will be the number of PV modules required. This number represents the minimum number of PV panels. If more PV modules are installed, then the system will perform better and the battery life will be improved. If a fewer PV modules are used, the system will may not work at all during the cloudy periods and battery life will be shortened. You have to know that, that the result of the calculation is our threshold or the minimum number of PV panels. So now let's do this on our example. We found that from our from step number one that the total watt hours is 1419.6. So in order to get the total watt peak of our PV panel capacity, we will divide this by the panel generation factor, which is for our example is 3.4. So it will give us 413.9 as a watt peak for our system. So now we used our PV panel or PV module, as we said in the beginning of our section, we said we are going to use a 110 watt peak module. So we'll divide this 413.9 by the 110 it will give us 3.76 modules so we'll find that we will use a 3 modules and 0.7 module which is not possible so we'll get the highest next integer which is 4 modules the 4 modules is the minimum amount of modules required for our system if we use more than 4 modules then our system will be performed better the battery life will be improved but if we use less than four modules, our system may not work during the cloudy periods and the battery life will be shortened. So the system should be powered at least by four modules of 110 watt peak BV module. Now let's discuss the step number three, which is the inverter sizing. So we have some important notes when we are choosing our inverter. So the first, what is an inverter? An inverter, it is used in the system where AC power output is needed. 
you know that when we are using our solar PV cells, it produces DC power or DC voltage, DC current. So in our home, we use AC power or alternating current power or AC, sinusoidal wave. So the inverter, it is a device or, or a power electronic device by using the thyristors or the PGTs or any uh, power switching devices in order to convert the DC voltage into AC voltage. So the inverter, it is simply used to convert the DC into AC. The input rating of the inverter should never be lower than the total watt of the appliances. The inverter must have the same nominal voltage as your battery. For a standalone system, the inverter must be large enough to handle the total amount of watts you will be using at one time. The inverter size should be 25 or 30% bigger than total watts of the appliances. In case of the appliance type is a motor or a compressor, then the inverter size should be minimum at least three times the capacity of these appliances and they must be added to the inverter capacity. Why? In order to handle the surge current during the starting. As you know that for starting of motors, you will find that the current will be uh, two times or three times or two per unit or a three per unit of the rating of our machine. Since the machine or the motor, for example, induction motor as a starting, it will need a large current. Why? In order to start the motor and overcome the frictional forces inside the motor. So the starting current is, is high in order to produce large starting torque. That's why the current will be very high at the starting. So we will need for the inverter must have a capacity of three times in order to in case of the starting current it will be able to handle this current in order to prevent the damage of the inverter so now let's take an example but first you will see that for a grid tie system or a grid connected systems the input rating of inverter should be the same as the bv array rating why to allow for safe and efficient operation now let's have an example. As you know that from our previous example, we have the total watt of all appliances, 18 plus 60 plus 75. Again, the 18 is the fluorescent lamp, the 60 is our fan, the 75 is the refrigerator. The summation of them will give us 153 watt. Now we said that the capacity of the inverter must be greater than the capacity or the total wattage of the appliances by 25 to 30%. So for safety of course, now you will see that the inverter side should be about 190 watt or greater. So we multiply this value by 25% or 30% to get a value which is 190 watt. So that is how we size our inverter thank you for watching this video and for more electrical engineering videos subscribe to my own channel i will be very happy if you joined me and for more courses and electrical engineering uh, videos stay tuned thank you